curious. Very curious. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 things only adults notice in the Harry Potter franchise. You lost me, my servant! For this list, we'll be looking at all those ideas that went right over your head when you were a young buck reading or watching Harry Potter. Watch out for some magical spoilers ahead, and let us know if we missed any of your most surprising aha moments in the comments below. Number 10. Hufflepuff Every Hogwarts house has its traits. Gryffindors are brave, Ravenclaws are smart, Slytherins are cunning, and Hufflepuffs are… stoners? When you're a kid, the signs that Hufflepuff House is full of kids who like to… light one up… might go right over your head. But let's consider the evidence, shall we? They're generally known as a chill, kind group of people. Professor Sprout, head of Hufflepuff House, is the herbology professor. Morning, everyone. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, and perhaps most importantly, their house common room is located directly next to the kitchens. That certainly makes it easy to grab a midnight snack when you've got the munchies. You know the prefect's bathroom on the fifth floor? It's not a bad place for a bar. Plus, you know the name of the house isn't really doing the secret any favors. Hufflepuff! Number 9. The Dementor's Kiss We've all heard the phrase, cruel and unusual punishment. It was a Dementor, one of the guards of Azkaban. It's gone now. While it's certainly possible to argue that some of the forms of discipline used in the United States fit this description, they're at the very least controversial and, at most, prohibited. It seems, however, that the wizarding world does not hold itself to the same standards. The Dementors affect you most of all because there are true horrors in your past, horrors your classmates can scarcely imagine. The pinnacle of all punishment in the Harry Potter universe is called the Dementor's Kiss. This occurs when Dementors, the terrifying Azkaban prison guards, suck out a person's soul. Yes, you heard that right. The person doesn't die, but is left a shell of their former self. Death is already a difficult concept to grasp, but our kid selves didn't quite digest the severity of this punishment. The ones that love us never really leave us. Number 8. Love Potions We'd expect the wizarding world to take consent as seriously as we do in the Muggle one. It's beautiful, isn't it? The moon. Divine. But when watching Harry Potter as an adult, you get the sense that everyone is just a bit more casual about drugging people than one would hope. In the later installments of the franchise, plenty of kids experiment with a certain love potion called Amortensia, which produces feelings of obsession more than real affection. The most powerful love potion in the world. It's rumored to smell differently to each person according to what attracts them. At one point, Ron accidentally takes an elixir meant for Harry, causing him to act a fool. Fred and George even sell love potions in their joke shop. It's all just a bit too casual and accepted for our liking. Don't worry, one one. I'm here. I'm here. Number 7. Body Shaming Look, we all know how vile the Dursleys are. Make a wish, Harry. <sighs> Petunia, Vernon, and their son Dudley all treat Harry like vermin, and it's perfectly reasonable to hate them. But as we grow older, there's one glaring issue with the portrayal of the Dursley family that we keep returning to. I'll be waiting to open the door. The books and movies seem perfectly content to fat shame Dudley and Vernon to no end. In the first movie, Hagrid literally gives Dudley, a child at that point, a pig's tail to make a point. There are plenty of actually shameful things that the Dursleys do. Yet the franchise keeps coming back to this. Stop my dad as he's not finding the nasty Give me some kiss. Come on. Number 6. The Time Turner Problem. Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban introduces one of the coolest inventions of the wizarding world, but also one of the most problematic. Mysterious thing, time. Powerful, and when meddled with, dangerous. Throughout her third year, Hermione uses the Time Turner to go back in time to attend as many classes as she wants. This is a Time Turner, Harry. McGonagall gave it to me first term. This is how I've been getting to my lessons all year. 
She and Harry also used the Time Turner to save Sirius Black from the Dementor's kiss. The issue with introducing time travel into your story is that it readily becomes a device that can solve most of the character's problems, but it's so rarely used as cleverly as it could be. Think of all the times they could have avoided extra trouble if they'd simply gone back in time to do it over. If we succeed, more than one innocent life could be spared. Number 5. Teacher Background Checks as much as we love Remus Lupin, we can understand why parents would be worried about having a werewolf teach their kids. This time tomorrow, the owls will start arriving and parents will not want a... Um... But that's not really the point of this entry. Dumbledore knew that Professor Lupin was a werewolf and did take precautions to keep everyone, Lupin included, safe. The real questions come about in regard to all the other staff. Professor Quirrell had the literal Dark Lord at the back of his head. Harry Potter! Professor Lockhart lied about everything a person could possibly lie about. Professor Moody was actually a Death Eater in disguise. Blood that runs through these veins runs within the Dark Lord. Seriously, does anyone do background checks on these people? Number 4. Peeping Myrtle When you first meet Moaning Myrtle, you might just think she's a little strange, sure. Who's Moaning Myrtle? I'm Moaning Myrtle! But as Harry and the audience get older, you realize that she's actually sort of a giant creep. In Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire, Myrtle happens upon Harry in the bath. Hello, Harry. Oh, long time no see. Instead of, we don't know, apologizing profusely and leaving the naked 14-year-old alone, she proceeds to mack on him, hard. Even though Harry is very visibly uncomfortable, she does not let up. It's a scene that gets harder to watch the older we get. Almost all the bubbles were gone. Number 3. Dumbledore kinda sucks. Professor Albus Dumbledore is one of the cornerstones of the Harry Potter series. It's my fault. No, the fault is mine. When we meet him as a kid, we're taken in by his power and his grandfatherly charm. However, as we grow up, it becomes more and more clear that Dumbledore was sort of the worst. Why didn't you tell me? For the same reason you tried to save Sirius. For the same reason your friend saved you. There are so many things that Dumbledore could have, and probably should have, told Harry that would have made his life a heck of a lot easier. Look at me! From letting Harry know about Snape, to the fact that he himself was a Horcrux, to a whole host of other useful bits of information. You were the Horcrux he never meant to make, Harry. Things could have gone so much smoother. Number 2. Why is this school still open? Let's recap, shall we? For stuttering Professor Quirrell. First year, an 11-year-old student gets into a battle with a Dark Lord-possessed teacher and literally kills him. Second year, a giant snake starts trying to murder students. Third year, an alleged mass murderer breaks onto campus. Fourth year, a student dies in a school-sanctioned tournament. Fifth year, a government-sanctioned teacher tortures students in detention. Sixth year, the headmaster is murdered by a professor. How about a cadaver? Seventh year, there is a literal war at Hogwarts. How is Hogwarts the safest place to be? How is the school even still open? And where are the school inspections when you need them? I knew it wouldn't be safe to open the chamber again while I was still at school, so I decided to leave behind a diary. The world may never know. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Everyone is chill with the enslavement of house elves. In the book Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire, Hermione founded an organization called Society for the Promotion of Elfish Welfare, SPEW. Who are you? Dobby, sir. Dobby the House Elf. She does so out of her astonishment that house elves are enslaved by wizards and generally treated like second-class citizens. Instead of other students getting just as up in arms about literal slavery, everyone either brushes her off or, worse, makes fun of her. Dobby was only trying to help. A Dobby saw a creature in Diagon Alley, which Dobby thought was curious. It's quite a jarring realization, especially as an older Harry Potter fan, to recognize how passive most of your favorite characters are about such a heavy, appalling crime. Except for Hermione, of course, because as we all know, she is perfect. Dobby is free. Do you agree with our picks? 
check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.